Hi, I'm Dr. Rhea Hogseth, founder and director of the Pediatric Dental Team Association. So are you having the same problems that a lot of our pediatric dental colleagues are having? That is trying to find staff. Whether it's clinical or non-clinical, there's a real shortage of trained, experienced people to hire out there. So if that's the case for you in your area, how are you managing to find new people to hire? Then once you hire them, how are you training them? I know a lot of us, when we go through this process, you're looking at resumes, and maybe you found somebody just looks so great from their resume, or maybe you got lucky and somebody transferred into your area from another pediatric dental office someplace else in the States, and you hope that that person knows exactly what you need. Maybe you had them interviewed either by telephone or in person, and you like what you saw there, and you need a warm body so you went ahead and hired them and have got your fingers crossed. Or the best bet would be, of course, having a working interview where you got to actually see what their skill set is. But the question here is, how are you evaluating that skill set? Because I know most of us are so busy, we don't have time to sit down and take it slow and easy and see what this skill set of this new person has. So we're just going to be kind of flying by the seat of our pants, so to speak. And we're hoping that their skill set will come out better when they're not so stressed or nervous because of the interview. How are you evaluating those skills? Now, most of us, when we get a new hire, employ the sink or swim kind of method, right? You bring them in, you've got a patient in the chair, you say, come on with me, we're going to go treat this patient, and you sit down and the stress level on both of you is through the roof. You, because you're worried about what's going on and you're trying to work with the patient, parent is there, and the new staff person is so stressed because they don't know what you want them to do. They don't want to look foolish or stupid to you and certainly not to this parent that might be in the room with you. So this is not a very good system as far as figuring out what do they know and how you can best onboard them, integrate them into your practice. So there is a better way and I suggest using a skills training checklist. Now I developed this in my office years ago and it was a lifesaver for me. So you're already kind of part way there if you've done your homework and know what the job description is for each of the positions you're trying to fill. So not only the, the skill set you want as far as personality and work ethic and those things, but what's the actual skill set they need to be able to do and perform to do that job correctly and efficiently and all those things that we need. So if you've got that kind of already there, you're part way there. You now just have to figure out what are those skills that you want them to have, list them out, and get going on the training. So let me tell you about the one that I developed, which is, again, the skills training checklist. So I have one for front desk, hygiene, sterilization, and assisting and a blank one to fill in as you need because we all do things a little bit different, right? So this person evaluating the new hire or even an existing team member that might need some help, it can be one of your core team members that you trust. It could be team leader if you have those. It could be the doctor or office manager, whatever works in your office. But you need to figure out a system, a way to evaluate the skill set of a new hire and of your existing team. Wouldn't it be nice to know that everybody in your team knows the same ways of how you want things done? I know you probably have an SOP already, but this goes beyond the SOP. It is actually making sure that the skills that you need for each position are actually there and are being utilized. So the great news is that these checklists are available to pediatric dental team members through the association. Everybody who's a member of the association gets this list, and not only that, 
they now have over 120 different trainings that they can utilize to help with the training of these new hires or, as I said, your existing team members who might be lacking in some skills. And that can be something as easy as basic communication, how to greet a patient, how to present a treatment plan to a parent, how to take a panorex, how to do basic sterilization. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to have a few cross-trained people in the front know how to come back and break down a room if you need some help? And how to set a room up or how to run some trays for you? Those are skills that are easily taught by using these training modules on the PDTA website. So no matter how you go about this, I urge you to develop a way to evaluate new hires skill sets either before you hire them, which is the best way to do it, or after you hire them, and also to evaluate your existing team. I guarantee you that this will be the best thing for you, your entire team, and your practice. Those new hires and existing team that need more training will have a plan, and they know exactly what their job is to do to learn, and you've got it planned as to who's going to be the teacher. This has been your practice pearl from the PDTA, and I'll see you on the next one.